We're making great progress along the digital thread. After all, we finally have a printed part. But our work's not done yet, because now we move into post-processing. For that, we'll travel across Youngstown to M7 Technologies. Before we get into that, we check in with scientist Fred Percy and M7 President Michael Garvey about the plan and the results of our institute monitoring. We got a part. We do. All right. I'll show you some of the data. Yeah. We had the laser sensor in the build volume. This is just a tiny little swath of the part. This is okay. just one layer, one piece of one layer. The blue is the powder bed. And the colorization shows you the height of, of what's above the powder bed. The red area here, yellow and green, that's where the laser came by and actually welded the material. So that's a little bit higher okay. than the powder bed. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to build this layer, layer upon layer. Okay. So this layer, if you look at the, the color mapping here on the right, it's only about 150 microns hot. And what we're trying to determine here is everything look good. Are there any spots that are missing? Are there any extra? But you can see right out here to the right, there's this strange little anomaly, a little spike that's sticking up. Okay. That's not supposed to be there. And obviously you look on the part, you know, there, there shouldn't be anything sort of over here. Yeah. So what, what is that? It's probably, it could be a little speck. It could be a, a little piece of metal that, that washed away a little bit. Uh, we know it's not uh, important for us. It's not there on subsequent layers. So, so in general, this is your clue to go look either during the build process to check Correct. to see if it continues to propagate through the part or maybe something that we want to check later during inspection? Yes. Okay. Yes, definitely. This uh, thing has something like 1,626 layers to it, and you're just pointing at a small, in this picture, you're just pointing a small fraction of one layer. One single layer from this sensor is millions of points. Okay. So you multiply that by your 1,700 layers. You could be talking about billions of data points. You're talking about billions of, of data points. Collecting all this data, you're talking terabytes of, of data potentially per bill. That's a lot of data having a strategy for how we collect that data, where and how we process that data, how we store that data, what we store, how long we store it could the all be- The accuracy of the data. The accuracy of that data could all be really important dimensions of the problem. Is that a fair? That's very fair. I, I think where we're going to see is the research that's gonna be done, identify exactly what needs to be monitored. Then the trick is gonna be how to capture that and distill it in real time down to a more manageable size that can follow so along with interesting the Interesting times, interesting times. Very interesting. Uh, Mike, so where do we go now? I mean, this part, you know, great looking part, kind of cool looking, but not what we need in order to have a functional part. So what, what's gonna happen next here? So we're gonna take this part that's on the build plate, we're gonna take it into the workshop and we're gonna cut the part off the build plate. Okay. And then we will mount this part off the build plate as built uh, onto a machining center. Okay. And we will do an initial scan of the part to determine the uh, stock that is on the part and to make sure that we have plenty of stock in the areas that are required for finish. Okay. Then we will machine the part. And from machining the part, we will then scan the part and make sure that it conforms. Okay, so we got a part, it's done. It looks like we expected it to look. What happens now? What we want to do now is verify that. Okay. Verify the part and check that it actually dimensionally is what it's supposed to be. You know what, why don't we do that in the uh, metrology lab? It's a little noisy out here. We have this, sure. it's on the network now, so yep. we can open it up uh, in the other room and uh, we'll take a look at that. Yeah. Okay, so this is our metrology lab. This all is right. where we make all the measurements, qualify parts, things like that. What you're looking at here, this very large machine, is a CMM machine, a coordinate measuring machine. Okay. And this machine is used to make precision measurements uh, on parts. This part in particular, because it's been topologically optimized, yep. it doesn't really do well with a machine like this. This is made for very simple round surfaces or flat surfaces. Okay. Uh, it would have a very hard time measuring the detail okay. of these very sort of oddly shaped yep. struts in here. So we've scanned it. We have a much higher density point cloud. And we're going to head over to the uh, workstation behind you, and we're going to look at that point cloud. So we're going to access that data that we had on the machine, that we took on the machine. We're going to bump that up as built. We're going to bump that up against as designed. Exactly. Make sure it fits. Can we exactly. take a look? Yep, let's take a look. I first want to show you the 3D model 
of the optimized part. This is gonna show the design intent, exactly what this part should look like theoretically. Okay, now what I wanna show you is the raw point cloud data that we took just a few minutes ago off that machine, the, okay. the CNC machine. Okay. This is the raw data point, so X, Y, Z, three-dimensional coordinates for all of these points. So that's what we have here. So first thing that we would do, naively, is to sort of look at them together, right? So let me, let me turn the other one on, and you, you don't really see much. Right. Right, they're, they're, they're basically- It looks like the model. It looks like the model, they're basically on top of each other. Okay. For each point, so each point that's in the point cloud, how far is that away from the actual 3D model, the design intent model. Okay. And what we'll do then is we'll colorize this model based on what that deviation is. Okay. Okay. So I will turn that deviation on right now, activate it, and this is what we get. Okay. So what we're looking at here to explain is the different colors show you how far that area is away from the actual design intent. So okay. how close are we? Okay. And if you look, the, the color is, is scaled over here on the right, it tells you, you know, red would be really bad, uh, purple would be bad in the opposite direction. Good data is kind of here in the middle, this green and blue. Okay, oh. which is mostly what we're looking which at. Which is mostly what we're seeing here. You know, I, I can sort of visually, you know, rotate this around, scan this around. Uh, you know, you see in here, you got the green and the blue, yep. but that's just, you know, green is a little bit positive, blue is a little bit negative. That's all good. It strikes me that one of the big advantages that we've got here is, you know, as described, we've got this as designed part, this perfect part in our minds, and then we've got this as built or as manufactured part. And through the digital thread, we're going to essentially be able to wed those things, kind of like the way we've done here, and have them reside together forevermore. Is that a fair characterization in your mind? Yeah, it's definitely a fair characterization. What we want to do is serialize each part, give each part a serial number. So especially on an airplane, right? Especially this will have a unique part yeah, definitely number have a, I want to know. Part number and a serial number yep. too, right? So then you want to then keep this information around for the life of that part. We've made good progress. We've gone from the original bell crank to this new topology optimized part. It's been tested and validated all along the digital thread. But how does this all come together to provide real business value? For that answer, we'll head back to Albuquerque.